Priya. Hi. Welcome to the Media Rumble. It's nice to have you here. So, a couple of quick questions actually. We will keep it short. Um, so, we all remember that when, when the Me Too movement broke, you know, it was a collective effort by the New York Times to sort of do investigative reporting uh, to bring out the 13, 14 different cases that, has, that had happened. Mm. Do you think the Indian media handled it as sensitively and responsibly the Indian wave of the Me Too movement as the New York Times or as the US? No, I think because uh, the Indian Me Too wave wasn't, uh, didn't have that uh, base of uh, investigative reporting, uh, a lot of the stories uh, didn't get enough play and uh, <clears throat> many of the cases are str like struggled in court and stuff. So, uh, and I also feel that uh, mainstream media didn't give it as much attention as um, maybe the online portals like uh, my, my favorites are Quint and News Laundry for covering my case. And uh, Hindu and Express were among the more consistent papers. And TY and HD was like sadly disappointing. So, um, we also saw that in, with the Indian Me Too wave, there was, a sort, uh, there was a sort of Twitter clutter that happened, you know, because it started breaking on Twitter. Then it seemed like the entire fight got pushed onto social media first before, unlike the US, where, you know, it was the responsibility of the paper doing the story because it was investigative reporting there. Here, it seemed that some of the uh, effort and the outcome got lost in the Twitter clutter. Is that, is that true? No, I don't think that's true at all. I think uh, that if you just click on that, what the most powerful thing about that uh, hashtag, Me Too on Twitter, if you just hit the Me Too hashtag, you know, you see uh, the same story unspooling all over the world, whether it's Armenia or South Africa or, you know, it's like, so it's just the power of that hashtag is uh, sort of, uh, it, it, it's made for social media. You know, the, the movement, it's sort of a space that was created on social media and that will have then have repercussions in the real world in many of the countries, even though some of the countries, the newspapers took the lead. In most countries, it was the newspapers following the story that broke on social media. Um, when, when we look at the Indian Me Too wave specifically, in retrospect right now, you know, because it did blow over, it's still going on. You know, for example, the cases are still going on in court and we're fighting them. But retrospectively, is there anything that we could have done differently or, you know, better in the treatment and management of the entire wave? No, actually, I, 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 I think it, it, was, it was a very powerful uh, wave and uh, it, it's not gone away. It's uh, sort of around and it's never, no, going, it's it's never going to go away, you know? But does that, does that, does that, you know, because when we were talking inside, you said that uh, people come up to you and say, thanks for creating this certain space. And it takes a lot of courage to do what you did, you know, and to come out and to battle the legalities with it. But some people would also argue that the Me Too wave could also be looked at as a, as a certain double-edged sword. Uh, you know, and there'll always be people uh, calling out the wave, call, calling it out for something that maybe it doesn't represent or it doesn't stand for. How do we deal with this kind of, you know, negativity when, when the movement and the force behind it itself is so great? Then how do you deal with such negative forces that come against it? No, I mean, uh, uh, for example, uh, the Me Too wave was called elitist. And to a certain extent, it is. You know, I mean, the women who have spoken up uh, in my industry, for example, are mostly English media journalists. And, uh, but we are not sort of, we are not making, it's not, it's, uh, it just happened sort of, um, what's the word, it just, it wasn't planned, it, you know, it just, that's the way it happened. Now everybody has an opinion on everything in, in the digital age and, um, I mean, it's only going to grow. People who are not represented in it today will be tomorrow or they will find different ways of representing their story or telling their story, which they already have. You know, and it, like, at the end, it's, it's, it's a, the community will just grow bigger. So probably my, one of my rounding off questions would be that there are a lot of girls, young girls out there today who want to create the same sort of safe space that you have created. But as, you, as, as when you were also coming out, you know, and fighting the story and breaking the story at the time and talking about your experience, 
there must have been certain apprehensions in your mind as well which which will probably be there in the mind of any young girl who wants to come out and tell her story so is there any particular message you want to give these young people out there message for young people don't feel scared we've everybody has the same story and you're not alone it's not your fault and just a couple of quick media rumble questions how was your is this the first time you're coming to the media rumble okay so how was your how was the how was your first experience so far good i'm enjoying it meeting lots of journalists i haven't seen in a while oh, nice. <laughs> yeah and uh, you know what do you uh, hope to take home from this experience what do you just uh, i'm trying to find out more about podcasting so i attended a podcasting session which was very informative just new trends that are happening in media what people are doing especially media startups i'm interested in and uh, my last question to you would be is there anything specifically that you would want to see next year you know uh, probably something more something less something that we could focus on more maybe a panel on mentor mentoring women and uh, even mentoring young journalists where have all the mentors disappeared and uh, maybe something on uh, breaking up how a big investigative story was done you know like the the sort of nitty gritty of how a team went about it like the story of the year whatever that was you know like for example or looking at how uh, the media covered a specific issue assam and the uh, nrc right now for example how you just spoke about mentorship so i'm curious you know how important is mentorship in current newsrooms as compared to you know when when you started off because at that time there were a lot of pioneers in journalism the field itself was way more glamorous than it is now so how how, how do you see this change in mentorship no one feedback from a lot of young journalists is that uh, no, nobody gives us any feedback on our stories we don't know uh, you know we we don't know how we are doing we don't know sort of we just file and it appears and that's part of the part of that is also because the medium has changed it's digital there's so much pressure there's fewer editors for more people there's more content but i mean we need to figure out a way to connect with reporters cool. where have all the reporters editors gone cool. thank you thank, thank you, you.